Hey, hey you. Yeah, you. I just wanted to stop by and tell you I love you. I hope today is a great day, and I hope tomorrow's an even better one. Take care. Tell someone you love them today. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll see how being 40 and dating for modern women sucks, how women get angry when they see a man dating younger women. Before we start, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you like what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your participation helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. Horsey here with another quick update. I'm uh, in Austin, Texas, actually, for the weekend. Here for work, but I might also be here looking for some boys. That was a tall glass of milk. <laughs> you know what I'd like? A tall man to lie me across a nice white tablecloth and just smother me in a smoky, but also sweet sauce. And just lick it off from head to toe. What if I find my soulmate and we get matching short rib tattoos. But wouldn't that be cute? The only guys that even glance in my direction so far have had several face tattoos and one of those real big beer guts. Looks like there's a tiny little boy living inside there. Hell, there might be, I don't know. If you got any tips or tricks for out here in Austin, let me know. We're roaming the streets, making eyes at men, making sounds, Ca -ca! Gotta make sure they hear me coming. Now I understand, brothers, why in prayers we always say, deliver us from evil, amen. You know, any man from Texas, she's out there hunting. Honestly, some women go to such lengths. These are the ones who should pay a man just to be with one. It's really something when a woman is more proactive than a man. Can you imagine walking down the street and seeing that woman giving you flirty eyes? That's when I say, Lord, I'm your enemy, because what on earth am I paying for? The wall doesn't forgive. When they're over 40, desperation kicks in because it sounds nice on paper to be strong and independent. But in reality, these women feel more alone than the sun at noon on a cloudless day. <laughs> um, I just want to come on here and be real with y'all for a second. That like, I know we joke around and kiki on here, but like, there is a part of the single life where, you know, it's not all glitz and glam and whatever, like, at times, sometimes, not all the time, this shit is very frustrating. Um, it gets annoying, you know, especially if you think you found someone and it's not your person. And then you have to put yourself back out there, be vulnerable again. It is annoying. It is frustrating. Sometimes you want to break your damn phone. You want to delete the apps. You want to block the numbers. Like, you don't want to, you just don't want to do it. Because, especially if you've been single for a long time. I'm motherfucking tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. So yes, it comes with the freedoms, but sometimes this shit is cut to It's not that it's shrinking. It's that your window of options is getting smaller. Why do you think they say you think you found someone who isn't your person? It's simply because they've made an emotional investment. But when a man has options, a 40-year-old woman is the first one to be discarded. Modern women Despite wanting to sell the narrative that single women are the happiest, in reality, I only see tired and love-deprived women. They want a man in their life, but the man just uses them. The worst part is that they rejected the good ones, thinking the grass would always be greener. But the reality is that as the years go by, the worse the quality of men they can aspire to. And here comes the question, what were you doing in your youth? What were your aspirations? What men did you let go? Because believe me, there had to be a good man but he was surely rejected or replaced by the Chad, a man who brings nothing to the table but seats. After they hit their 30s or 40s single, now they deserve a good man. Now they see the reality of who they were discarding. Now it's us who discard them. We let them hit the wall because the wall doesn't forgive. If you're a woman over 40 and you're just getting back into the dating scene, this is the number one secret to finding the perfect partner. 
for you. When you're single and ready for a new relationship, it's only natural to daydream about what your perfect mate might be like. You might imagine what they look like, what they sound like, what their hobbies are, what it might be like to travel together. This natural instinct to daydream about a future love can easily be transformed into one of the most powerful techniques for attracting your perfect mate. This technique is called envisioning, and it's really just daydreaming while holding a specific intention in mind. The intention usually takes form as a question. Instead of letting your mind wander, you focus on the question. You allow your mind to mull over the question without being attached to the answers that surface. But here's the trick to making this a truly powerful attraction technique. Don't ask the question about your future mate. Ask the question about your future self. We rarely envision ourselves in our future relationships. We assume that we'll be the same as we are now. It's actually really dangerous to envision yourself as static. If you look back at yourself a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, are you the same? The truth is you're changing all the time. And if you're envisioning a long-term relationship with someone, you should expect to change over the course of the relationship. Your ideal partner shouldn't just be somebody who can love you today. They should also be somebody who wants you to evolve the way you want to evolve. In other words, they should encourage you to be the person that you want to become. Here's a quick exercise for this. Close your eyes and envision yourself five years from now. Don't think about where you're living or what you're doing for work or what your family looks like. Just focus on your core qualities. How are they different from today? What does it feel like to be you five years from now? More laid back, more balanced, more adventurous? What do you want more of in the future? It might be more courage, more freedom, or more self-control. The answers that service will give you a sense of the direction you want to move in. Once you've plotted this internal roadmap of yourself, when you're meeting new people, you can ask yourself, does this person bring out the qualities in me that I want more of? Will this person support and encourage me to be who I want to be? Or does it feel like they would do the opposite? Choose a partner who will love you now and will also love the person you're constantly becoming. If you're getting back in the dating game and looking for your ideal partner, DM me Perfect Match and I will send you my free guide to finding love over 40. Oh, interesting. Let's see how it works. You close your eyes, you're a 40-year-old woman, and today you've hit the wall. Imagine five years in the future, you realize it's coming back. You hit the wall again because you can imagine however many years you want. The wall doesn't forgive. These are the silly things that make a woman end up single because it's just a discourse where she chooses what she wants without giving anything in return or changing anything about herself. If that were the case, we would all ask for supermodels. Why not think? What internal work can I do to be a better wife? What should I work on in myself so that a man considers me the woman of his life? What attitude should I bring to the table to form a relationship with a man? Things like performing acts of service, speaking affectionately, being connected to your feminine energy, treating the man with respect, giving him love rather than burdening him with problems, not living by complaining and being discontented with everything he does. For women, these things are complicated because almost all men, I dare say 90%, ask for these things. But they prefer to imagine nonsense and create a perfect man in their heads when, first, beauty doesn't give them that, and second, they are average women at best. That's why they hit the wall and the wall doesn't forgive. <laughs> so a little while back, I was dating this guy who was like in his mid-40s and like a month in, he was like, you know, I realized I can't I can't do this. I have to work on myself. I have a lot of work I need to do on myself. And I was like, what do you mean you have to do work on yourself? You're in your mid forties, baby girl. Your work is done. Like you are a fully cooked person. The only, the only thing you need to work on now is who you're going to put in your will or what retirement home your family's going to have to check you into because you're you're done you're fully done like tiktok your time is ticking you old bitch sorry you know what's one of the big differences between men and women that men discard in silence or make excuses to do it more empathetically but women do it in the cruelest way when they want to end things with you that's why a man invents excuses like i want to work on myself I'm not in a good place. It's because we want to dump you subtly because you don't qualify. Every man can confirm this in the comments. But would a woman do the same? Of course not. She'd ghost you. And when you finally hear from her, she'd send a cruel and hurtful message. Or worse, she'd be with someone else. When you confront her, she'll tell you it's over. And the worst of all, we can still be friends. This man may also not want a woman who is 40. When he has the chance, he'll look for a woman up to 10 years younger, 
or he might just feel comfortable working on himself because a man's best investment is always in himself. This yields more results than investing in a woman. Working on your body, improving social skills, knowing how to sell, enhancing your finances, trust me, it will give you a better option than a woman in her 40s who has hit the wall. I wanted to respond to this because I thought it would be a really cool moment to point out how much the intersection of ageism and misogyny plays a role in our dating rituals in ways that we don't even notice. And the reason that I say that is because it's hard for me to tell by the tone of this comment, it seems totally fine and, and just, you know, a comment not meant to be hurtful. And so please don't take this as a public attack again. And please, if you are watching this and it triggers you, please do not comment on this person's comment. <laughs> just let's please just everybody be nice. The reason that I want to say this is because it seems so entrenched in our cultural norms that a man in his 30s could not possibly date a woman in his 40s. I'm thrilled that this person says, yeah, I would, but not yet. That's great to, you know, be willing to date within your age range when the time comes instead of dating a lot younger. But why is it so hard in our culture for us to allow for men to date older women? Why not? Like devil's advocate, Maybe there's a 45 year old woman out there who's the perfect match for a 36 year old man. Maybe, but we don't think about that because we're so boxed into these tiny little containers that say a man in his forties or fifties could date a woman in her thirties, but a man in his thirties could not date a woman in her forties or fifties. Why not? This is where unconscious bias comes in. It's so indoctrinated into us that we just don't even think about it. It's not meant maliciously. It's not purposeful or intentional. It's just part of the, the water that we swim in, as they say. So I really want to encourage men out there, bust out of the box. I'm telling you, dating women over 40, it will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. I'm not saying like you have to go specifically look, but just let yourself out of the box. Who knows? You might meet someone who is in her 40s when you're in your 30s and have a grand time. Trust me, you probably would. For every taste, there are colors, but the exception doesn't make the rule. The modern woman keeps saying that a man is lonely, that he's getting old, but what she doesn't understand is the value of the sexual market between women and men. A woman has more demand the more beautiful and young she is, but a man has more value for what he can provide or, better yet, what he brings to the table. I'll explain it to you with an example. You're a 20-year-old guy who falls in love with a girl. She's just studying, has no social or economic value. This woman switches you for a 35-year-old guy who can travel and has a yacht. But now, you're the guy who can travel, who has a yacht, in good physical condition. Would you go for the woman who rejected you at 20 and is now 35 like you? Or for the 23-year-old super beautiful girl, who is fertile, can have your children, and whose beauty is at its peak? I'll read in the comments what you chose. For my part, I'll go with the 23-year-old. It's just that a man always seeks younger, while a woman goes for older. When you see a woman wanting to date younger men, we can say the same phrases they use with men. She just doesn't have what it takes to date people her age. Brothers, remember, a man's highest social value starts from 27 to 45 years old. What you have to do is do things right. The results will come. I always tell you. The best investment for a man is in himself. Most shocking confessions heard by a divorce lawyer. One couple who had a very, very uncontested divorce. We went to court, we were driving back, and she said to me, I have to tell you, the thing that really bothered me the most about this marriage and why I divorced my husband is because he looked better in my underwear than I did. That's life. Everybody's got their thing. Needless to say, they got divorced. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll see how a woman divorces her husband and father of her four children as a divorce coach talks about how to relate to money and why a man doesn't leave his wife for his lover. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you like what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. 
Your participation helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. This is a message to any women dating married men, so if you're not, keep scrolling. More specifically, this is for those that are hoping and believing that he's going to leave his wife for you. Look, I'm not here to judge you. You already know what you're doing is wrong. You're already aware that this could negatively affect the wife's life and the kids if he has any. But you're still doing it. So let me help you out, sis. He's not going to leave. No, seriously, like, he's not. If people are truly unhappy enough, they will leave. Regardless of their circumstances, regardless if they have kids, unfortunately, regardless of their financial situation. So stop believing the excuses. You deserve better than this and so does his family. 90% of the time, men don't leave. He's coping in unhealthy ways, so do everyone a favor and get out. Also, if you're dating a married man and not expecting him to leave, I have nothing to say to you. I agree with this woman. A man doesn't leave his wife for a fling. It's because one out of every five couples formed from infidelity survives. It's that every married man who cheats on his wife does it just for some fun, not because he doesn't love his wife. It's that a man always wants to access as many women as he can get. It's our nature. But a man doesn't make an emotional investment even if he sleeps with this woman. But on the other hand, a woman does. A woman who is unfaithful must have been in love with that man. She must have focused her attention on that man. That's why she makes an emotional investment. Because unless she is a morally distracted woman or belongs to the streets. Now this woman says this because surely she was the mistress or she is the wife of a man with a mistress. It's very well known that a man's betrayal is seen in two ways. When the man has nothing and betrays his wife, that man is garbage. The woman leaves him or the mistress leaves him. At once you hear the woman say that she wouldn't be with that garbage of a man that she won't forgive him. But when the man brings a lot to the table, has the woman living a great life, this man is not garbage. The woman at once says it's that bitch who wants to come and destroy my marriage. Why won't she leave her husband for the other woman? That's why the moral of the story here, keep your wife happy. <laughs> I had to start over again after divorce. Here's what I would do. You're going to want to hit that save button so that you can come back and see this for later. So the first thing I would do is get myself into a routine ASAP, whether that's a morning routine, a nighttime routine, a gym routine, something, any type of routine, because especially after divorce, when there's so much unknown, you want to make sure that you have something that you can control and a stable environment to feel comfortable in. The second thing I would do is I would start to develop a healthy relationship with money. Money is just the tool. A lot of people look at money as the thing that ruins everything or that money is something bad or that money is something scary. But what we don't realize is that money is simply a tool. One thing that you can do to help establish a healthy relationship with money that I really love doing is incorporating Money Monday. So Money Monday is just a day that I look at my bank account. I also dream. I look at my 401k. I look at my savings. I don't focus on how little I have in there. I focus on abundance. I focus on being grateful for what I do have in there, even when sometimes all I had in there was a nickel. And the third thing I would do is start to develop a healthy relationship with yourself. Even though divorce can feel so incredibly isolating and it feels like nobody understands what we're going through, we do. We need to be our own cheerleader. We need to be there to support us. We need to be our best friend. We need to be the person that we need to get us through this divorce. One thing that I really like doing is getting a picture of my younger self and putting it on my bathroom mirror. I cultivate a healthy relationship with that little girl and I talk to her every single day and I tell her how strong she is, how beautiful she is, and that we got this. If you're on a mission to transform after divorce, follow for more. Brothers, there are no things more beautiful than seeing your bank account filled with money. It's much more comforting when you took it from your husband in the divorce. Of course, you have to be happy to have money you didn't work for. Now the husband, I'm sure when he looks at his, he won't have the same thought. It's that with the modern woman, everything revolves around money. That video is exploding with comments because all the girls were saying that the only thing that comforts them in that difficult stage of divorce is the money in their accounts. You'll never hear a man say this because unlike her, ours ends up at zero due to the divorce. That's why I always say a man who recovers from a divorce is a strong man because it's a tough road to start over from scratch with nothing. To see what you worked for 5 to 30 years vanish the moment a judge determines it, and even worse, the lawyer's fees. That's why men nowadays don't get married because who wants to enter into a lifelong contract with someone where they get more benefits for leaving you than staying with you. I love this comment. If you're divorced, listen up. Yes, I have rebuilt my life in the last 7 years. 
I am going into my year eight of my rebuild and I can effectively say I'm like over the hump. But the reason why I want to call this out is because not everybody has the same timeline, has the same trajectory, but it takes as long as it takes. You built a whole life with someone for 10, 15, 20 years, and then you turn around, it's decimated, and you have to start over. So give yourself some grace. Like you're, It's going to take some time to like re-solidify what it is that you want to create for yourself, what it is that you want, and whether you're at square fucking one or you're three years in or four years into your rebuild and maybe you feel a little stuck, it's okay. Like it's just part of the process. You're in process, babes. And you know what? If you're in process and you want help with your rebuild and you feel stuck and you're like, fuck, I just need some extra. I need a boost. I need to figure out what the hell I even want. It's exactly what my program, Money Before Men, does. We're open for enrollment right now. You can find the link in my profile. Fuck the timeline. Get in the car. Let's go. Seven years to rebuild your life. That's what it takes after you leave with the house. Half of the man's money. Child support. Who knows if alimony. And I bet even more. Since this woman is a divorce coach, something I didn't know existed. She's a woman who prepares other women before filing for divorce. In short, she's the one who prepares women by giving them advice on how to take everything in the divorce. So, imagine how long it takes for the man. Because sometimes he has to work twice as hard, since he is child support, sometimes a lifelong debt with alimony, which means that almost 30% or more of his money is skimmed off every month. That's why I always tell men, when your woman comes to you and talks about divorce even in the slightest, don't panic trying to fix everything because most likely she's already prepared to screw you over. Quickly get the best lawyer you can afford, protect your assets, that's a declaration of war. Stop thinking that just because she loved you she'll have mercy on you. At the time of divorce, that woman who was your princess on your wedding day turns into the devil. Protect your assets, brother. I'm divorcing my high school sweetheart. After knowing each other since we were five years old, being best friends since middle school, dating each other since we were 15 with some breaks in there, being married for five years and four beautiful children, he is no longer my romantic partner. I'm in therapy, recovering from what I now know is a trauma bond. And if you don't know what that is, look it up, but it's a cyclical thing in a relationship and typically is normal to form from somebody you've been in a relationship with since you were a kid, basically. Divorce is hard, but I think divorcing someone who I basically have grown up with and who I've known since we were children. It's a different kind of grief and it's a different kind of divorce. You know, it's not like I met him in college and I only know him as an adult. I know him as a, a kid, a teenager. You know, I've, I've witnessed him become a grown up and he's witnessed me become a grown up. He was with me and loved me at my worst physically. You know, you, some of you may or may not know, I used to weigh 380 pounds. He dated me then. Maybe wasn't as good to me then as he should be, but you know, which for my specific situation reinforced the trauma bond because he loved me when I thought nobody else would because of my weight. And it has been the most difficult process breaking that cycle of behavior to leave and get back. I'm done. No, let's fix it. I promise I'll change. I promise it'll be different this time. And there's also an embarrassment that comes from it not working out because, you know, you ride hard for this person that you've invested all this time in, defended, and it turns out it isn't going to work. I will, however, never regret a moment of any of our relationship because I have four beautiful children who I believe were meant to be here. And I want to acknowledge how... I don't know if you've noticed, but many women want to leave their marriage just to try to go viral on TikTok. They want to get attention from what should be the worst thing that happens in your life. You see this woman destroyed by divorce, but it doesn't seem like she even cares. But you say that this man accepted you when you were a war tank. Now that you look somewhat good, that you have four kids with this man, now you want to leave him. Why? Let me guess. You deserve to be happy, and you're in a traumatic relationship. 
When you've been together since you were 15, now you realize that, of course, now that it can make you a content creator, you need a tragedy to catapult your channel. Here I ask myself, where did you leave your vows? Where is the well-being of your children? Do you want to be a single mother now? Find another man to raise four young kids, risking their influence from another man, who knows what kind of intentions he might have. But of course, you deserve to be happy because as we all know, what matters are the emotions of the woman, not the well-being of the children or the family. But let's continue. How difficult it is to get out of these relationships. It's hard to get divorced in any scenario. And I'm not trying, I don't want to compare anyone's journey or grief. But I think when you know someone so deeply, like I'm losing my childhood best friend, my high school best friend, my college best friend, and a husband. I mean, he has literally been a part of my life for over half of my life. He has been in my life. And he, he will be in my life for the rest of it because we have kids together, but it's different. If I have to set boundaries to ensure that cycle never happens again, it has to be different. And so not only am I grieving a divorce, but I'm also grieving what I thought would be. I'm grieving half of my life and I'm accepting failure. And you know, you can come on here and you can shame whoever for like not leaving sooner, but oh my God, is it the hardest thing to leave something like that? And I'm putting this out here because I know there's someone else like me. There's, there's probably thousands of women like me in a very similar situation because I've found them when I was searching for similar situations. I found them and it helps. And I just want you to know there will come a time when you can get out when something snaps and you're like, okay, I, I can do this. I promise there will come a time. So I've had a bad couple of days because that's weighed heavily on me. You know, the, what I'm giving up, not giving up, but what I'm losing, you know, and I just wanted to, um, I guess just let other people who may be in a similar situation know, like you're not alone. Um, so yeah, here's to growth and healing and breaking cycles. What I wonder is why a woman goes to therapy if in the end she will only make the decision that benefits her instead of the family. What trauma then does she want to heal? This is why I get angry at feminist discourse or when a woman says that single mothers are single because there was an irresponsible man who didn't want to take responsibility. But when 80% of divorces are requested by women, Women like this who have a marriage with someone who loved her at her worst have built a family that now has four more members, their children. This woman wants to leave this marriage. Regardless of what she destroys along the way, regardless of how she envisions her children's lives afterward. Because believe me, they're the ones who will suffer the most. Moreover, she posts it, how do you publicize the destruction of your family as a motivational or supportive message? What support is she giving? Instead of supporting her family, she prefers to do it to a stranger on the internet. Brothers, I repeat, protect your assets, because nowadays with these modern women, it's very possible your marriage won't last at all. Remember, on your wedding day, she's your princess, but on the day of divorce, they turn into the devil. Where do you live? In the city. Do you have a house? Apartment. On a rent? Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's an even longer story. <laughs> Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll discuss women and their ridiculous standards for selecting men. We'll also see a woman who refuses to grow up and keeps subtracting years to claim she's in her 30s because she doesn't want to accept she's hit the wall and that the wall doesn't forgive. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you like what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. We'd also love to hear your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. Being single is hard, right? Like it's tough, This that's not news, like it's hard. But I always go back to the fact 
that being single at the end of the day is exciting because you don't know how this is all going to work out for you. You have no idea how you're going to meet your person if you've already met your person. That's something that I'm always like, have I already met that person that I'm going to marry? Like, it's so crazy to think about. But regardless, it's like, it hasn't played out for you yet. No matter how it is, it hasn't played out for you yet. And how exciting is that, that you get to think like, oh my God, I don't know how this is going to work out. Like the like big plot twist kind of hasn't happened for you. Yet. And all the people who have gotten, you know, in a relationship, then engaged and then married, like have gone all the, through those steps. Like they've done that before. They've done that's in their past. But for us, it hasn't happened yet. And I just think I'm like, that's such an exciting part of life that we have yet to experience. So I think about that sometimes when I'm just like stressed about just like life or just dating or whatever. Like I just think like at least like I have not, I haven't figured it, that out yet. And I think some people that might be stressed out about that, but like I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about the fact that I haven't, that I don't know who I'm going to end up with yet. And again, it goes back to I'm like, is it someone I already know or is it someone I haven't met yet? Like either of those things I think is so like, interesting and I just know that there's going to be a good story no matter what so I think if you're ever feeling like oh my god I haven't met anybody yet I'm whatever but I'm like but it's you should think of it as like it's exciting that you don't know it's exciting that it could change tomorrow this could all happen to you tomorrow and you know I'm still someone that's just like oh my god it's never gonna happen whatever blah blah, blah. like is it gonna take me 10 years to find a husband but I think at the end of the day it's very exciting This woman has been making videos about being single since she was 28, so she must be around 30 to 33 years old now. She's still stuck on this idea of finding the perfect man. I would recommend her to get out of this Disney tale and find an average man at least to secure a child. But modern women don't want average men because they all deserve high-value men. What I don't understand is that she's not an unattractive woman, and at one point she was dating a man who claimed to be a good guy and enjoyed the date. He was willing to wait for her but apparently that didn't work out. So here's my doubt. If you have several dates with different men and none of them choose you for a relationship, who's the problem? Because the only common factor is you. So, woman, you need to examine yourself because you're not appealing or you don't know how to keep a man. You can get dates, but making a man stay is something else. Either these men don't see you as wife material or your standards are causing you to fail. If you keep this up, you'll end up like the next woman in the following video who refuses to grow up. Ready with me to process my feelings. There is not a date number four. There was three dates. The first date was so good. I was so excited after it and I got hopeful. The third date, I don't know what happened. There was a shift and I just felt uncomfortable. Things felt different. He seemed different. I just decided to end it after the third date. Being hopeful for me is very vulnerable because, I don't know, you just, you get your hopes up and then you start imagining what your life could be like. And if you had a partner and especially this time of the year, it's February, so we all know what that means. Valentine's Day. It's only a week. It was, or just over a week. It was nice to have someone to talk to and it was exciting. So used to being alone. I've been single my whole life. I definitely got love bomb. He was saying all the right things that I wanted in my future. And if I said what I wanted, he he validated it. I think I'm over it now, but I was a little sad. I did think that maybe, just maybe this year, I would actually have someone to do something with for Valentine's Day or be someone's valentine. I've never had that before in my life. I'm 30. I just want someone to love on me. If that makes sense. Of course, because my mind loves to go to the negative very fast. It goes directly to, well, here you go. You're going to be single forever. It proves me wrong. It proves me right. Here we go. We have to go back to the apps. Just like question, like, am I actually going to be single forever? Or is this just my mind playing tricks on me? And it's just kind of like, <sighs> You get hopeful and then it gets shut down. But I guess this is the process of dating. I just really want someone to like do stuff with. I'm tired of being single. So ultimately we didn't get the ending we wanted, but it's okay. 
I am just going to trust that my person is out there and he'll come to me when it's right, even though I hate that and it's really hard to say that because I'm not very good at being patient or I want the end game. I don't want the middle and that's something I really need to work at because, you know, there's a lot of joy and beauty that happens in the middle. But for me, I just want to race to the end. I want that person. I want my family. I want my kids. I want it all, but I have to realize that it's not going to happen like this. So if you're also on this dating journey, I am with you. And I honestly, I love being able to connect with you all about this because it makes me feel less alone. And you guys are all my friends. So thanks for all your love. Brothers, is this woman delusional or are these just some heavily beaten down 30-year-olds? The wall really doesn't forgive, but I never thought it would affect someone's mind this much. First off, I would recommend this woman to see a psychologist because there are definitely some screws loose in her head. <laughs> Secondly, I'd tell her that the wall doesn't forgive and that the train of husband and child seems to have left the station a long time ago. This woman looks closer to 50 than 30, and if this is what 30 looks like, woman, what kind of life have you been through? She has so many videos of dates that, to me, it's just a parody she keeps inventing. Because only simps would be showering her with love here. This woman is imagining things, and I have no doubt about it when she's the one subtracting years from her age. Here I ask, what's happening with modern women that they have to reach this point? Where they have to lie about their age and make fools of themselves on social media just to get some attention? This is simply a sad person. This, the question is no longer does he like me the question is do i like him do i like him or is he just tall do i like him or does he check a couple of my boxes do i like him or is he genuinely a good guy i feel like for so long in my life i would do the i wonder if he likes me i don't know and i would get so wrapped in the idea does he even like when looking back on all of these situations i didn't even like him i'm at a point where i genuinely don't care anymore you're going to have to do so much for me to really give a fuck. Because I know exactly what I want. I know exactly what it looks like. I know exactly what it's going to be like. I know exactly what it's going to feel like. So no longer is the question, does he like me? The question is, do I like him? And do I like everything that comes with him? Because I'm really good in my own space right now. And it's going to take a lot for me to budge on that. This is what I call a woman who has become the man she wants to marry. They are among the worst women in the wall ranking because they hit the wall, yet still fail to understand that they need to lower their standards to find a partner. The problem with these women is that they make men compete not with another man, but with their imaginary man, the one they believe they deserve. These women never give themselves the chance to get to know a man, to really talk to him and see if he's suitable for her. Because if the man doesn't have the physique she believes she deserves because her imaginary man does, then this man is discarded. And I understand the concept of knowing what you want because, whether women believe it or not, men have standards too. But men give you the opportunity to qualify yourself. Women, on the other hand, are the opposite. They go to the date with this list of unrealistic standards, not seeing if you're the man who fills their checkboxes but rather acting like an interviewer at a job, where the man has to come with a resume to get a woman on the wall, heavy, bitter, and demanding. Now I tell you, what do you offer? Check out how this type of women ends up in the next video. Get ready with me while I give you a little update on my dating love life situation. It's pretty non-existent since the date number three with that last guy. As you probably have seen, or if you didn't see, it just didn't turn out the way I thought it would. There was a lot of red flags that came out and I just didn't feel comfortable moving forward. So I just cut it right there. I don't know, something about me is that I don't want to settle. Like I obviously very much want to be in a relationship, but I also don't want to settle. I have been in toxic, situations in the past which ultimately weren't like a relationship they were more like a situationship where I was treated like trash so 
I know what it means to kind of like fall for someone who ultimately is not the right person for you and ultimately can just lead down a wrong path. But I haven't really obviously experienced the whole like been in love or anything like that. And that's fine. I'm learning that from posting about it. Honestly, I'm learning that I'm not the only one, which is really cool because when you're like 30, you kind of feel like your clock is ticking. And by now you should be like in a relationship, but Obviously, that's not where I'm at. I'm learning so much about myself, which I feel like we are constantly doing. And don't get me wrong, like you can absolutely do that when you're in a relationship. It's just, for me, I just want to be like confident in who I am before I like fully go into like a long-term relationship because I don't really want to change who I am for someone. And if that's something you do, like... You do you. It's just not something I want to do or promote. So I've been on the apps. I'm on Bumble and Hinge. And I've just been swiping to the wrong way. And honestly, I feel like if you're on apps, then you totally understand how frustrating they are. And I don't know what else to do. I just like, I don't leave the house a lot unless I'm going to work. And like most of my friends already have their partners are kind of established in that area. I feel like it happens when you're not like expecting it. Like the last few times when I've matched with someone and we've actually gone on dates, it's usually... Here ends the story of the very demanding women. It's like a mirror where one can reflect. This woman claims to be 30, which unless someone is an idiot, knows is not true. She laments reaching her age without finding a partner. You can see the depression is killing her because the majority end up depressed. They don't see how frustrating dating apps can be, how much they try to make an effort to get dates, to meet someone. It's true what she says. When you're 30, women start feeling the rush. Their biological clock starts ticking, signaling them to move because they're getting old. That's what we call the wall not forgiving. Just listening to her saying she's been in toxic situations with him. With Chad, a man who brings nothing to the table but his seed. Another thing I want you to notice that happens a lot to women is that when their friends get married, and you're the single woman in the group, they exclude you. Of course, no woman wants you near her husband, especially when they know you're desperate. Women aren't stupid. They smell your desperation. They know that another woman is a woman's worst enemy. Of course, I'm going to put you in your place. I won't invite you to gatherings near my husband. The wall doesn't forgive, but let's continue watching her story. I'm not like striving for it. It just kind of happens. And then when I want it to happen, it just doesn't. And it's like, ugh. I didn't really prioritize dating or relationships in my 20s just because I was focused on a lot of different things. Like, 20 to 26 was not the healthiest years. And then I had a business until 30, and that was my priority over literally everything. I haven't been on hundreds of dates. I have literally been on probably less than 20 dates. I obviously want to like go on more dates and meet more people and just kind of like do things like that. But I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to force it. I don't want to just like go on dates with random people that I'm like not going to see our future with. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's my problem, but I don't know. it's just me. I do live like in the middle of nowhere and as you may know I live with my parents so it's also different. I'm just trying, I don't know, what do you guys do for dating? If you're on the apps and you're just like frustrated, do you just take breaks? Are you trying to like go out and meet people? Like for me, going to a bar is not an option because I don't drink and I'm just not gonna like, sit in a bar by myself. Like that's not a good time for me. I'm just trying to figure it all out. Like, I'm sure all of you are, too. And sometimes we forget that. We're all just humans trying to figure shit out. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now with dates and dating and my love life. First, God, 
whoever just drop my dream and it's just like so many people are like it's gonna happen when you're not expecting it but it's like how long do you wait for that person if you're also going through this dating journey and you're feeling lonely or alone through it or you're just kind of frustrated you're not alone because you can confide in me and you can know that I'm also going through it and feeling all the feels when it comes to it and just like I get frustrated I want to give up I get annoyed it's just like you go through the waves of emotions with anything that you're dealing with in life so don't let that stop you and just know that you're not alone like always thanks for getting ready with me brothers this woman has everything against her she's hit the wall doesn't accept her age still lives with her parents and seems a bit unstable mentally in short getting involved with her only brings chaos into your life did you hear when she said in my 20s she focused on work and who knows what else when she hit her 30s that's when she started actively seeking dates but how does someone who supposedly dedicated their life to business end up back living with their parents? Plus, she doesn't like going to bars. What does she expect? That a man will come knocking at her door? Is she ordering them from Amazon? The wall doesn't forgive, but reaching this age without achieving anything significant in life is just passing through life without making a mark. At this point, all she's left with is going to a church to see if she can fool a brother into becoming a beta provider or getting involved with a man in his 60s to see if she can avoid dying alone. Women, prioritize relationships while there's still time because if you miss the train, there's no second stop because the wall doesn't forgive. I have myself so riled up thinking about how men used to write books like this. And now they're all Bitcoin obsessed, SoundCloud rapper, finance bros. That's not what women want. We want you to be in existential crisis at all times and pretty gay. That's what we want. That's what women like. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll explore the mindset of the modern woman. We'll see how a lady sews baby clothes for her imaginary grandson since her daughter isn't getting married, and how a woman fails to explain what a high-value man wants. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you enjoy what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. Because at the end of the day, you don't need a man. No one needs a man. No one needs an extra person with them. All you need is yourself. And if you can focus on yourself and the person you are and appreciate the person you are, then that is the main thing because you are amazing and don't ever let anyone make you feel like you need someone or that you need anyone to better your life because all you need is yourself. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. So I'm dating this guy, right? And I can tell every person I've dated up until this man has been very situational. You want to know how I know that? Things go wrong and I'm like... Guess we gotta call it quits. This just went wrong. And he's like, wait, why do we have to call it quits? Because this thing went wrong. Like, that doesn't change how I feel about you. Things happen, shit happens, and we'll figure it out. What a concept. What a fucking concept. And how much do you want to bet she'll leave him? Just by hearing that all the ones she's been with have been situational, meaning she loves Chad's, and this guy isn't a Chad. He's just her simp. That's why she'll leave him too. Like all simps, when she tells him, I guess we have to end it all, he responds with, we'll figure it out because I love you. Yup, he's a simp, and she's going to leave him. Listen, guys, if a woman tells you she wants to end it all, don't start qualifying yourself to her by saying, let's work it out. I love you. We can handle everything together. No, don't do that. That's what a simp does. If she tells you she wants to leave, well, there's the door. I don't want to be with someone who doesn't know what they want, so I'm discarding you. You leave her. I bet that with her ego shattered, she'll do anything for you because you took her off her pedestal. Remember this phrase, if you treat her like a star, she'll see you as a fan. Women who say they don't need a man and that they only need themselves are the most desperate for a relationship because even though they say they don't need men, everything they have to survive was made by a man 
and indirectly or directly, men's work sustains your life. In the end, when you have a problem, I bet you'll go to a man for help because every independent woman needs a man to fix things when a problem arises. Hi, this is a message to all the fuckboys. You are going to turn 40 at some point. You will get old and you will get ugly. So please don't treat women like they're objects and like they're replaceable because so are you. Replaceable with a younger guy walking down the street who does it better than you and who is more smooth and is making money and who's making bank and who can actually take your girl out on a date. So instead of sliding into all these girls' DMs, like try to build up a connection. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You know, it's cool to act like you're 17 years old when you are 17 years old. But if you're 25 and you're acting like you're 16, mm, then maybe try therapy instead of dating. And don't hurt people just because you're hurt yourself. You can go to therapy. It's a thing. Or read a self-help book, my lord. Anyways, just thought I would point out that you will get old and you will end up alone if you don't get a grip. You should try it sometime, getting a grip. It's very uh, steady. You know what happened here. This woman is just hurt that the Chad dumped her. Yeah, because between ages 20 to 28, Chads, men who bring nothing to the table except their seed, are the men these women love. She starts making angry videos when he rejects her. Here, I want you to see how the Chad manipulates them, and he doesn't let himself be manipulated. The moment she asks where things are going, he dumps her, tells her the door is right there, because he plays on desperation, anguish, and uncertainty. Those three will always be your best allies, especially when we know women are emotional and faithful to their emotions. She'll come looking for you because you hit her ego where it hurts. And there's nothing more desirable to a woman than a man who makes her fight for him, who makes her value him. This woman seems to forget that men seek women up to 15 years younger than them, and at 40, easily go for a 25-year-old who even wants to have your kids, because women are thirsty for high-value men, to the point of stealing them from their friends. The man just has to do the work of maintaining his body, his health, his financial life, and focus on his life goals. I bet there will be more than one interested. I think we need to normalize being single in your 30s and restarting later on in life. And I know a lot of people listen. That's always something that it's more females, but to be like, I got divorced or I broke up. I'm now I don't know what to do because that, they were my whole life. And so I think it's just good to hear that. One thing that I thought about yeah. was, like, if people really do live longer, right? So let's yeah. say we all live to be 100. <laughs> yeah. Scary. <laughs> no, yeah. no, thank you. I think, I think well, women live longer than men. Yes. And I think the average life expectancy for women right now is, like, close to 80. Wow. Yeah. I could do it. Maybe I'm above. fine with 80. I don't want to yeah. get 90. Like, we're, like, we're <laughs> I have 87 You'll be in killing. You guys will be killing it at night. You'll still have this fucking podcast. <laughs> oh, we will. Yeah, you're yeah. talking about the nursing home, like the dudes <laughs> that are hitting on you. She wants to normalize hitting the wall saying that 30 is the new 20, but that's not going to happen because the wall doesn't forgive. Many of these divorced women after 40, still destroying their husbands, can't find money to support themselves. Why do you think they fight so hard to keep permanent alimony? Because they know many of these women would go hungry or become a burden to the state. A man who takes care of himself can work until he's 60, especially if he does what he loves. He works until the last day of his life. But it's the man who leaves a legacy. Why do you think women always want men with money? It's so their children won't struggle in the future. Besides good genes, they want the inheritance left by these men. Throughout history, it's evident that men have left the best legacies. That's why women strive to enter the realm of high-value men because it secures their long-term financial future. Today, most of the houses owned by these older women, the majority come from divorce, where it was an ex-husband who left it to them or they took it from him. Just look at the women who reach 50 single, many drowning in student debt. They're struggling. Brothers, don't be fooled into thinking it lasts until 80 or 90 because most didn't have to work to have what they possess. They simply inherited the fruits of a man's labor. You literally wouldn't believe what my mum's doing. So for a bit of context, I'm 31. I've been single for six years and I live at home with no intentions to move out because I can afford about a shed around where I live. That's it. Oh, and the last time I went on a date was last October. That's a long time. I refuse to go on dating apps. Unless I meet them in person, I'm done. This year, I was like, no more dating apps. I'm not doing it. I refuse. 
I'll show you what she's doing. Show me it. Huh? That's her knitting her future grandchild's blanket. I will give it to her though. She's chosen a really nice wool. It's like cashmere and um, merino wool blend. But um, she's going to be waiting a while to use that blanket. Well, ma'am, the best thing you can do is buy yourself a doll. I believe it's more likely to use that baby clothes. Look at this woman, 31 years old, hitting the wall, living with her parents. And you tell me they're happier single? In other words, she's living off her father's income even though she's of legal age. Wasn't it supposed to be that children help their parents? This lady is making baby clothes with those crazy ideas from dating coaches about manifesting what you desire through clothing, like those who used to buy an engagement ring, pretending it would bring a man to marry them. This lady just wants someone to take her daughter out of her house. Any beta provider who wants to take on this problem? Yeah, because it's very likely that you'll end up broke and have to support this woman. The wall doesn't forgive, woman. Make the most of your 20s. Bet on a man's potential because it's very probable that the wall will come for you. <laughs> this is how to be treated like the high-value woman that every man wants to marry and spoil. The way that men think is this. There are different calibers of women and they all require different things. The girl who doesn't take care of herself, who dresses provocative, who lets everyone touch her, who doesn't have any boundaries. Men are like, okay, she doesn't require much. I could give her literally nothing and she'll be happy. And then all the way at the top caliber, you have the woman who takes care of herself, who doesn't let people disturb her peace, who dresses really well, who cares about her career, who just loves herself unconditionally and thinks she deserves literally the world. And so a smart man knows that if he wants to be with that caliber of woman, that he needs to provide more in the relationship. I'm not saying like financially, I just mean that he needs to actually show you, like be paying you a fee in love, time, energy, money, gifts to literally be in your life. And so a smart man knows that if he wants to be with that caliber of woman, that he needs to provide more in the relationship. I'm not saying like financially, I just mean that he needs to actually show you, like be paying you a fee in love, time, energy, money, gifts, to literally be in your life. Like you must have it all. If you wanna become that caliber of woman, it's, it's really simple. Number one, don't look for attention from men. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but forget about them for a while and really pour into yourself because people see you as valuable once you have poured into yourself and then they will be chasing you like a dog with a treat. Number two, taking care of yourself is a non-negotiable. You need to be exercising and you have to put good things in your body. I'm sorry, but that's the way that our body works. You need to eat well if you wanna have clear skin. You need to eat well if you wanna have energy. You need to eat well if you want to actually be happy and not have like all these crazy hormones that are happening because you're eating plastic. Working out doesn't have to be that hard. Literally just do a 12 incline and just walk for 30 minutes. You will literally lose weight. Number three, dressing well, of course. Develop a fashion sense that makes you feel confident, feminine, elegant, and respectable. Think about your idea of like pretty woman, like pretty elegant woman and dress like her, be like her. You're gonna become so confident and you're gonna stop dressing for attention. Lastly, it's all about working on yourself mentally. When people see that you don't have any mental traumas, that you're just genuinely so happy, that you have nothing wrong going on in your life, you're not angry, you're not sad, you're not jealous, people are so freaking attracted to you. Like, they can't get enough of you. They're just like, how is this girl so perfect on the inside? Start journaling, start meditating, start listening to podcasts. My podcast is called The Busy Leveling Up Podcast. Make sure you tune in if you really want to become that girl. To a high value man, I mean like the highest value man that you could think of. I mean like $50 million net worth, good looking, good values, caring, romantic. That is what those kinds of guys are looking for. Nothing else. These are the women who claim to be of high value, but they're actually high maintenance women. They're a drain on your wallet because to keep them looking beautiful and happy in the relationship, you always have to be spending money on them. They'll tell you everything a woman needs to do to get a high-value man. But more than what the woman must do for the man, all you hear is what the man must give to the woman to have, according to her, a woman of her caliber. Just hearing her say she literally deserves the world, not necessarily financially, but then she says she needs to be paid the fee of love, 
time, energy, money, and gifts. If all that doesn't come with a financial cost, we're living in a fantasy world. Now, I wonder where her high-value man is because according to her, all one needs to do is some internal work and the man has to cater to her every demand to get a woman like her. But let me tell you, no one wants a woman like that because instead of adding value, you subtract it. In everything you said, there wasn't a single thing about what to do for your man, just about what you can get from him or what he needs to work for you. Instead of being a wife, you want to be a trophy. That's why you end up being the mistress, or the men you describe just use you and discard you because the modern woman is mistaken about what a man wants. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think a high-value man is looking for? What should that woman do with her 31-year-old daughter at home? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.